Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of The Broken Meeple, and today we've got a nice, simple game for you done by what can only be described as probably the ultimate tag team for me in recent months. Yes, I've banged on and on about how I love Abyss, the game, well, the exact same two designers, Bruno Kafala and, if I'm not going to pronounce this right, uh, Charles Chevalier, I guess, um, have come together to create Micropolis. This is a new sort of tile drafting game from the pair. It's supposed to be like a 30 minute game, simple, does up to six players, you know, just basically drafting and building an ant colony. In here, you take control of a bunch of soldier ants and a bunch of tiles will be laid out and very much in the same context as things like Century Spice Road and Majesty for the Realm and uh, Small World, that kind of thing. You draft the tiles based on placing your little ants on them the further up the chain you go. It's very much the same sort of mechanic. You grab the tile and you place it in your colony and then from then you can only build to the left or right of it. It basically surrounds this little uh, circle and you carry on doing that until everybody's got a full colony and then you total up the points to see who's got the most. And you'll score points based on who's got the largest army of soldier ants, who's got the most ants period, the different types of fruit you can have, you know, there's a few different ways to get points. But other than that, that's pretty much the whole game. I've already done the overview in what, like less than a minute? The game is so simple to teach and play. There's very little to it. In fact, I, I dare say the scoring is more involved than the actual gameplay is, you know, in terms of having to teach it to people. It's a very dirt simple game and certainly fits the profile of gateway level. I don't see any complication with this teaching this to a brand new player. Component wise, you've got some fairly, you know, cutesy artwork. It's very, it's colorful for an ant colony anyway. And you get these little uh, soldier ant pieces and it's all done out fairly nicely. The tiles are nice and large, you can clearly see what's on them, there should be no ambi you know, ambiguity as to, oh, is that, uh, what type of ant is that, you know, is that one of these? Nope, the graphic design is sound, it all makes perfect sense. You know, you shouldn't be getting questions during this game unless you didn't teach it that well. And, uh, hmm, my first game I kind of didn't teach it that well because I had literally breezed through the rule book. But, honestly, you know, you take, what, five minutes, ten max with that rule book, you can have this game ongoing as it goes on. Question is, though, is it actually fun to play? Well, generally, yes, it is. It, you know, if you enjoy drafting, you're going to enjoy this game because you use that element of, you know, that mechanic as you go through. And if you have played games like Majesty or Small World, and that, that whole concept of, I want to take, I could take this tile for free, but then I want that tile that's further up, and I've got to place an ant on each one, it's a cool little, like, simple but effective decision tool in trying to decide, well, I really want that tile. And you're restricted on how you can place your tile because you have to go left or right of ones that you've already played. So you might be trying to build up this big gallery of ants and they're like, or like to extend the queen's home and you find that the tiles there are so, oh, they're going to close off that gallery, that's not good, um, I need to build on that side or I'm going to have to chuck out the soldier ants in order to ensure that I get the tile that I need. The interaction among players is fairly minimal, it's basically the same as any other drafting game, you know, you, do I take this tile before another player does? The only minor bits of interaction involve a specialist ant who, you know, you've got ants with different special powers like the nurse, the queen, the recruiting a the agent, recruiting, um, I think it was, well, the recruiter, I'll call him, a uh, sentry, who's a bit like a general, and each one of these ants, as you get the tile, do different things for your hive, but one of them does allow you to nick a soldier ant off another player. I mean, it's a fairly minimal level of interaction that this game has. One thing I have noticed with this game, though, that I, I, it's a bit of a flaw, it's, it's a bit of a nitpick, because you can get this game done and dusted in 30 minutes, 45 minutes tops, 
and you know, you're on to the next game. But one issue I had noticed was there's not many opportunities to get more soldier ants in this game. And the first player token is distributed based on who has the largest army, and there's also a five point bonus at the end of whoever has the largest army then. We've had games where soldier ants don't come out very often. So you run into a situation where you can't get enough soldier ants to like choose beyond tiles and suddenly the drafting element kind of becomes sec you know left by the wayside at that point because you're pretty much just taking the first free tile. Especially if you have a player who does nothing but try and gain all the soldier ants all the time. And yeah, you've got soldier ants on the tiles, but if one player is constantly, you know, in first place for a soldier army, he's going to always have the first player token, which means that they get first pick. So they generally just grab the one on the end, they've got all the soldier ants in the world, and everybody else is forced to, you know, take whatever tile they can for free because they've run out of ants. Now, that guy's not going to win the game, but I have come across people like that, and it can slightly spoil it in here or there. But in general, there isn't actually that many ways of getting more ants. You've only got a few of those recruiting guys, and you've got the nurses who bring out more ants, but some of them might bring out mostly one, you might get a three here or there. I think there's only one three I saw, maybe a couple of twos, but yeah, they don't bring out a lot. And if you're playing with a lot of players, you kind of find that at least half the group's gonna be kind of like skint on the soldier ant front, and it limits their choices, and limiting choices in a drafting game is not a good thing. But, you know, that aside, the game is fairly short. You will get it done and dusted in about 45 minutes. Even with, you know, six players, it should not take too long. It's not quite as super fast as something like, say, Seven Wonders or Sushi Go because you're not doing simultaneous drafting. You're doing one player at a time chooses a tile. So the longest this should take you is an hour, and that's if you've got six players who are pretty slow. Um, you know, you should be able to wrap this up in 45 minutes without any trouble whatsoever, because even though it's one person at a time, goes are so quick. You can see the tiles on the board. You know which one you need. You know what you're aiming for. You might have to think a little bit about, oh, do I want that one or do I want this one, but it's not going to cause anybody analysis paralysis, so you should be able to get underway as quick as possible. The different scoring opportunities, I mean, obviously, I've played it a few times, but, you know, if, if you're going to talk about game balance, you kind of have to devise a whole spreadsheet in order to do that sort of thing. But with this, you know, so far, based on the few games, they do seem quite balanced in the way they score. You know, we've had games where somebody has won by collecting a ton of ants in their colony. We've had some where somebody got the, like, like all the fruit, and they got a bucket of points for doing that. Um, the five-point bonuses you get for largest army or largest collection of ants in one gallery can swing the game. I've had it happen to me where, you know, I was just pipped at the post for getting the most ants in the gallery, cast me the game and I ended up in second place. So there's different ways to score and they seem relatively balanced, but of course, depends on what tiles you're getting during the game. You know, one in particular that involves you having to put soldier ants on barracks is fine, but you don't usually end up with a lot of soldier ants in order to actually fill those barracks up. But, you know, you can potentially do it. It just depends on what tiles come out. So, there's not much else I can really say about Micropolis. It's a simple drafting game. It is perfect for gateway level. It is super fast. You can get it done in 45 minutes with up to six players. And we don't get that many decent five or six player games, you know, that can handle that amount in a short time. The artwork is decent, the components are pretty good, you know, little miniature soldier ants, a uh, little colony base and, you know, nice colourful tiles, you know, there's, there's no bad component in this box. The insert, you know, holds all the components, it's not a big, you know, game on your shelf, it's not a particularly high price point either, it's just a nice, simple, streamlined design. Now, if there is probably one flaw to mention after all of that though, this doesn't really bring anything new. There's nothing in this that's going to make it stand out as like, oh my god, this is revolutionary, this is like the next best thing in drafting. Nah, it's another drafting game. That's kind of, I know that sounds quite negative, I don't mean it to be too bad, because the game is solid. I enjoy it, I'm going to hang on to this, I think it's a great gateway game, and one that I'm going to keep for teaching new players. But it's not like I can go, oh, this is the best drafter now, yeah, we don't need Seven Wonders, uh, we don't need uh, Century Spice Road and all that stuff anymore, we have this. It's an alternative. 
not a replacement for anything, it's a good solid alternative. You know, perhaps the, the whole thing of pushing cubes with Century Spice Road didn't appeal to you. Well, maybe collecting ants in the colony is more. You know, particularly if you're going to teach younger people. You know, young families with kids, they'll get onto this artwork. It's cutesy ant artwork. They'll certainly get onto that more than like, hmm, I can push yellow cube here and turn it into two. You know, that kind of differentiation between, you know, a cutesy Euro theme and a more dry Euro theme. I mean, yeah, the fact that you're building an ant collie is kind of irrelevant, you know, you could be building anything with this. But it does make sense that you've got, you know, a collection of ants will score you points, the fact that they all want different types of fruit and things like that. So, you know, it works fine for what it is. So, Micropolis, pretty solid, six player, you know, six player potential drafting game, about a seven for me. It's a decent game. I'm not going to say it's revolutionary, but I think it does the job nicely. It's certainly one for you to check out if you're just looking for a nice, simple Drafting game for that horrible cat player count of five to six players. Handles well with two, three, or four, and you do get an expert mode in the box as well for two or three players where you build two colonies. That's quite a fun way to play as well. So, you know, works at all player counts. It scales pretty well. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. For now, it doesn't matter if you got ants in your pants, it's still only a game. Take care. See you next time.